robots, of course, have been around for a long time. If you had gone into an automotive factory in an advanced country back in the 1980s, you would have already seen these big, powerful industrial robots. So what all this automation means that in developed countries within manufacturing, all of the truly rote, repetitive assembly line jobs where you just stand there and do the same kinds of thing again and again, those jobs have already disappeared. And the jobs that have been left for people in manufacturing have primarily been those that are unpredictable. Often it's jobs that rely on qualities like visual perception and dexterity. An example of that might be loading and unloading trucks in a factory. Uh, that used to be a job that could be done only by people, but that's rapidly changing. And what you see here is a picture of a robot built by a, a company in Silicon Valley that is specifically designed to move boxes. And you can see that in the picture here, the boxes are not stacked precisely. Some are rotated a little bit. There are gaps between the, the boxes. The boxes are different shapes and size and colors. Up until recently, only a person would have been able to figure out how to move these boxes. But this company has built a robot, and you can see it looks like a robotic arm with a machine vision camera on the end. This is a robot that can now move these boxes, and eventually this company expects the robot will move about one box every second. Now that compares to about one box every six seconds for a productive worker, a human worker. So you can see how that's going to be a big disruption. Also, this robot will work continuously. It's not going to get tired. It's not going to get injured. And so as this technology becomes more affordable and available and reliable, a lot of companies are going to come to rely on this, and that's going to threaten a lot of jobs. Now, there's quite a conventional way of thinking about this, which says that if you are working on a loading dock, lifting heavy boxes all day, that's not a great job, really. You're likely to injure yourself. If you do that for decades, uh, many people end up disabled. They can't even work at all because this is such a difficult uh, job. So in a sense, if a robot's going to come along and take away this job, we shouldn't be too upset about that. That, in a sense, is a good thing. That's something that we might celebrate. Uh, and there is a solution to that, that when a person loses a job like this, we ought to send them back to school, give them some more training. Maybe they end up working in an office in a safer, more comfortable work environment. That's the way things have always kind of worked in the past. But what I want to show you next is the reason that maybe that's not a sustainable way of viewing this. Uh, and this is a graph that is focused on white collar automation. In other words, computer algorithms that are doing white collar jobs and more skilled jobs. And what you see on the right is a bar chart showing the number of employees in the corporate finance department in the largest US corporations. And corporate finance is jobs like accounting, accounts payable and receivable, financial planning, and so forth. And if you look at that chart, you can see that about 40% of those jobs have disappeared in the last 10 years or so. And that's happening largely as a result of smart software, which is taking on more and more of this work. And there are many other examples we can give. Uh, for example, lawyers are being impacted by smart algorithms that can review documents and figure out if they're relevant to a court case. Uh, there are also sophisticated systems that can evaluate contracts. Uh, journalism, for example, is another example. Uh, there are systems that can tap into a stream of data, analyze that data, and then automatically generate a news story. And that's, those stories are published online or in newspapers. And you can read one of those articles, and it won't be immediately obvious to you that it was written by uh, a machine and not a human journalist. So this is becoming very disruptive. And I think that what it leads to is a world where almost any kind of knowledge work, any kind of white collar work that involves sitting in front of a computer, doing predictable things, generating the same report again and again, or doing the same kind of analysis, all of that is going to be highly subject to automation. And these, of course, are skilled people in many cases, people that have gone to university. And so if this, this idea that we can just educate people more and more no longer becomes sustainable, then we really need to think in a different way, because this is going to be a real challenge for us.